Now, molecular technologies like next-generation sequencing are becoming a key part of precision medicine, but these tests come with their own challenges. To discuss this, I'm joined by Christina Lockwood, who will be chairing an interactive case-based workshop on the subject. Tina, thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. So what are the emerging technologies that you plan to be discussing and why are they important for AACC meeting attendees to know about and why are there so many different types of molecular technologies? It's a good question. We, we often feel like it's uh, sometimes almost an alphabet soup of different types of technologies when we're talking about these things. So uh, really that, that's the intent of the session is to introduce this topic to uh, AACC meeting attendees. So I'll be talking about the use of next generation sequencing for cell-free tumor DNA testing. Uh, my colleague Vera Paulson is going to be talking about the application of DD PCR or droplet digital PCR. And then Scott Levitch is going to be talking about the application of RNA-based next generation sequencing. And really, we're really going to emphasize um, how we use this in molecular oncology. Emerging molecular technologies sounds like these methods aren't well standardized. Are the technologies that you will be describing in this session considered controversial? It's also a good question. It's not that they're considered controversial uh, per se, but they are new, um, at least new to clinical laboratories. So sometimes we've been using these things in a research setting for quite a while, uh, but they haven't really become, I would say, the standard of care, and they're also highly specialized, so they're not offered everywhere. There can be differences between different laboratories, um, and both regulatory agencies and our professional societies have really tried to create guidelines, and that helps some with the standardization. Um, but since we have a lot of clinical chemists who uh, attend AACC regularly, I do want to highlight this is just another lab test. We see this happen all the time in clinical chemistry, um, and we can think about immunoassays, and harmonization continues to be one of the top considerations when we talk about clinical chemistry. We want our lab test to be the same, molecular, the same sorts of challenges apply. We're very intrigued by the name of your session. It's titled, If at First You Don't Succeed, an interactive case-based view of emerging molecular technologies. What does not succeeding at molecular testing look like? Right, uh, so it can look differently in, in different settings. Sometimes it looks like we don't get a result. So if you don't have enough tissue, for example, then you can't ultimately make DNA, RNA, and, and test it with any sort of a fancy pants molecular technology. When, uh, uh, on the converse side of that, if you're doing an assay that um, uh, is really giving you a qualitative result, either you have, because we're talking about DNA, either an A or a C or a T or a G, um, one of those types of failures actually doesn't look like you don't get any result you could get a false negative result. And that's really why you want to use the right technology for the right application, which is what we're gonna be guiding people through in this session. And I know that one specific example that you'll be looking at is liquid biopsy or cell-free tumor DNA testing. What is this and how is it being used to treat cancer patients? Absolutely. So um, this was really when I felt like I had made it as a scientist when my parents asked me uh, after reading a newspaper article if I knew what this liquid biopsy thing was. And I was like, yes, absolutely. Let me talk to you about that. Um, so the liquid biopsy is really the, the term that has been um, adopted in the lay press for, for this. And, and it, it really captures what's happening, which is we're using a blood sample um, to see what's going on with a patient that has a solid tumor, let's say colon cancer. Um, and what's amazing, still amazing to me, in uh, cell-free tumor DNA testing is that little pieces of DNA are shed from the colon and make their way into the bloodstream. And then what you can be doing actually is monitoring a patient's blood to see what's going on in their tumor. It's instantly appealing that you don't have to go back and do a biopsy over and over again. Yes, very appealing to that patient, certainly. As we mentioned, the workshop will be case-based. So what types of patient cases can attendees expect to hear about? We really, this is what we do day in and day out. So we've picked out real world cases that we've encountered in our clinical practice. And what they illustrate are some of these challenging scenarios that again, happen in real world. Um, these are cases that have benefited from some sort of a new technology. Uh, I do need to highlight that it's interpreted by an expert. So these aren't things that are sort of a cookie cutter. They're, they're not a routine. There's some speciali specialization in them. Uh, so some of the cases that I'm specifically going to discuss and I get really jazzed about are pediatric brain tumors. Um, and this is a great application of cell-free DNA because it enables us to monitor and sometimes even diagnose uh, brain cancer in a kiddo. I, I don't have to sell anyone on how uh, invasive a brain biopsy absolutely is. So there's a huge benefit and we're really excited about this work. Wow, very fascinating for sure. Tina Lockwood, thank you so much for your time and for joining us today. Thanks very much. It's a pleasure to be here.